Welcome to Jared Scott Outdoors. This YouTube channel is dedicated to getting our youth more involved in the outdoors. To do this, I'll be out with family and friends doing all sorts of outdoor adventures. This week on Jared Scott Outdoors, I am visiting one of Idaho's premier fishing locations and we're going to be doing some fishing. Now, behind me is Henry's Lake. You know, if you were to ask anybody in southeast Idaho, where is one of the best places to go lake fishing? Henry's Lake is going to be on the top of just about everybody's list because of the size of fish that you get here, the quality of the fish. And uh, anyways, however, it's before Memorial Day weekend. And if you know anything about Henry's Lake, you know that it's closed to fishing until Memorial Day weekend. And so how are we going to do this? Well, I'm actually hooking up with the fishing game, the idle fishing game, and they're taking nets out in a boat. They've been dropping nets off for the last couple weeks and doing fish surveys. Now they've been doing this for 20 years. And so they, they gather these fish and then they do their, their data and they analyze them and it tells them the age class and all different kinds of things. And it helps them to manage this lake so that it is one of the premier fisheries here in Idaho. I met up with Damon Keene and John Flinders, both Idaho Fishing Game employees that work closely with the Henry's Lake fish population. Getting started early in the morning, we were on the lake not long after sunrise, cruising across the water towards the GPS location of the first net. There were six nets in the lake today, three nets that floated in the top six feet of water, and three nets that sunk to the bottom six feet of water. I'd have to say, it was pretty odd to be on Henry's Lake and not see another boat anywhere on the water. But being a few weeks before the opening Memorial Day weekend, we really didn't expect to see anyone. Up ahead we saw buoys that supported the first net, so I was interested to see what the catch would be. I really had no idea what to expect. With a big container at the front of the boat ready for whatever was caught, John reached out and hooked the net, and then the two started pulling it in. Right off the bat there were two classic Henry's Lake fish, probably in the four pound range, and that was in just the first part of the net. Of course, that made my expectations high of many more fish being brought in, but oddly enough, as they continued to pull in the 150 foot long net, there wasn't another fish on it. So then it was off to the next net. Hopefully the next one would do better than just a couple fish. The goal is to catch about 11 trout in each one, but so far this year, they've been below that target number. Using a different container for this net, as they kept each net separate, they started pulling this one in. As you can see, this one had lots of smaller fish being caught. Most of these were chubs, and as they generally swim in schools, when they catch some, they catch a bunch. As they continued to pull in the 150 feet of net and started getting to the bigger netting, bigger fish showed up, which meant trout. And unlike the last one, there were a handful of trout caught. None of them were as big as before, but more of them. Then it was off to the next net. These nets have been placed in the same areas every year during the 20 years they've been doing this. In that way, they can make sure that their comparisons are consistent. Now this next net was odd in that the buoy was actually bouncing up and down, just like a bobber would if you were fishing, except that the buoy is really big. It would take a pretty significant fish to do that. Come check this out, Jared. Sure enough, as they pulled it in, one of those Henry's Lake lunkers that everyone hopes to catch was caught in the netting. Oh. Wow, what a fish. Man. Surprisingly, it was the only fish in the net. While the fish caught so far were big, the numbers were definitely down. So with this data that we collect from the gill nets, one of the things that we're able to calculate is, is uh, mortality rates or survival. So how many fish survive? that we stock and Henry's Lake consistently for the last, you know, ever since we've kind of been monitoring the population, it's about 70% mortality rate every year. So the, you stock a million fish, so you could expect that next year that you'd have, you know, 300,000 of those fish left. So the fish in this system, they're kind of unique in that they, a, a five-year-old fish is an old fish in this system. Um, most of them, you know, they just grow big and they kind of die young. So most of the population is is age two, three, and, and four-year-old fish. Occasionally, some of the fish that will age, you'll look at, and you, you do get some of these bigger fish like that one we caught in the last net that, uh, 
you know they'll be seven or eight years old occasionally but but they're pretty rare there's not a lot of them that are that old i asked damon to talk about how fishermen impact the overall fish numbers here at henry's lake mortality related to fishing is is called exploitation and our exploitation numbers are always in the single digits on Henry's Lake, so 5%, 4%, 3%. For instance, last year we estimated during the krill survey that we harvested about 5,000 fish, and out of a population of 500,000 or, or more, those uh, exploitation numbers or the mortality related to fishing would be you know, one or 2%. So angling, uh, more harvest related to, to angling, our angling harvest uh, uh, doesn't drive the population at all. And even on years like 2013, we estimated we harvested 25,000 fish. That uh, exploitation or, or harvest number is still uh, uh, in the single digits. And really to affect the population, we'd, uh, it would take about 30% uh, you know, harvest of, of the entire population. So we're well, well under that. There's, uh, um, the population definitely isn't driven by the angling harvest. So natural mortality is just the, the, the natural mortality that's causing the population. So regardless of anglers out there, if we didn't have angling on Henry's Lake for say a year, if we shut it down to fishing, not that we'd ever do that, but it, in, in theory, if we ever did that, if we stocked a million fish, 70% of those fish are gonna die by the by the the end of the next year so we'd have 30 percent of those those million fish so 300,000 fish that would go to age one would be alive regardless of angling mortality so when Damon's talking earlier a little bit about angling mortality that we estimate from krill what we call krill where we interview the anglers and find out how many fish they caught and, and how long they fish and then we can make estimates on on what the actual harvest rates are it's a really small segment of that population that's really driving it so regardless of what you do your this population based off of our our odal list that we use to do the catch curve analysis is about 70 percent overall so again overall we hadn't caught that many trout in the first few nets but that would change in the next three suddenly the net seemed to be full of trout of all sizes there were a few more lunkers caught that had to be in the seven plus pound range as well as a variety of fish from last year's planters to the classic three to four pounders that are so plentiful in Henry's. All right, so that is six nets now that they've pulled in. So we will head back and they'll work them up. I'm not quite sure exactly what that means, but we'll head back and kind of see what it is they do. And we'll talk to them and find out exactly what the data they find out means. So anyways, there's some big fish we're gonna show you when we actually pull these out of the nets definitely bigger than anything I've ever caught here. With the sudden increase in the catch rate in the last three nets, we headed back towards the dock having had what appeared to be a better than average day compared to the previous day's nettings this year. All right, so here is the big lunker that we got. There's actually a couple others that aren't too much smaller than this. Just a beautiful Henry's Lake fish. You know, this is what they talk about when they talk about those big Henry's Lake fish. So now we are going to take all the fish back. They're gonna process them and, uh, and they're gonna tell us what it all means. That's a good looking fish. Back at the Henry's Lake Idaho Fishing Game headquarters, we had help waiting. Each net was gone through with the catch once again being kept in a specific container to keep track of how well each net did. 37.69. So now with all the fish ready to process, it was time for the next step. 5.95, 21.21. John and Damon both took care of that job, while two others, Damon's wife, Carolyn, and Nancy, recorded all the data. Now I'll warn you, this next part may be a little gross, but it's what has to be done in order to age the fish. So one of the things that we do on every fish here, um, we collect all their odalis of the trout. And so to do that, that's what I'm doing right now, is I'm kind of below the, the gill plate here. 363. So right here at the base, kind of inside the trout where you you know you normally go to gut a fish, right at the base of that we, we clip with some wire cutters in there and just clip down a little bit and then you can you can pop the head back and the odalis just sit right here at the base, right there. So we go in and, and get them out with tweezers. And those the odalis are 
inner ear bone is the common term for them a lot of times of the fish. They sit in the brain case and they sit in that tissue that's on them and when they, there's vibrations in the water that otolith will kind of rock in that tissue but, and so they use them to hear. This is how a fish hears are these otoliths. But more importantly for us, it's how we age them. So we can age that much like you do a tree ring where you look and you see how old a, a tree ring is where it has different distinct banding patterns. We look at light and dark patterns. So in the summer, when a fish is growing a lot, its bands are spaced out so you have a kind of a, tr a clear band in there. And then in the winter, when the water temperatures get a lot colder, those bands lay down really close together. And so you get a dark band. So you look at that light to dark band ratio to count how many clear and dark bands there are to determine how old a fish is. Well, it's a beautiful day out today, as you can see, so Memorial Day, you know, it's coming right up for that opening day. And you saw some of those big fish. There was a big one that just jumped right there. So there's some big fish here in Henry's to come out and catch. You know, if, if you're up for it, come out here on Memorial Day weekend and fight all the other fishermen and see if you can get a big one. If not, wait a little bit, let the crowds come down, and then come out here and, and do some fishing as well. But either way, Henry's Lake is an incredible place. And I'll tell you what, the idle fishing game, they do a lot behind the scenes that, that, that you don't think of. And uh, there's a lot going on, and they're trying to balance it so that we have, you know, the numbers are up, the size is up, and, and just trying to balance each fishery um, to, to what we want as fishermen. So anyways, we appreciate your guys' help and, and all that you guys are doing. That's good. These episodes can't be done without your help. You know the drill. Please make some comments, like, and subscribe. And I'll keep working on more videos.